Oh yes, it's that time once again. My name is Splattercat, and we are here at the Nerd Castle today playing Mountain Blade Warband in our vanilla playthrough. I hope you guys are enjoying the series, and as of the last couple episodes, we had gotten our own little village, Peshmi, which is pretty broke. We're doing our best to try and help him out. We've run off some bandits. We've done a number of quests for him. You can see here that they're very, very uh, supportive to us, which means that we're going to get higher tier troops from them whenever we need them. As of right now, we just did our little recruiting string, though, so it's going to be a bit before we're going to be able to grab a few more guys. But being able to jump straight into the second or third tier with your units is always useful. Let's take a look at our notes. Okay, we have no quests running right now. Which means they are pretty free to let us off the leash to do whatever we want with Rodox. Let's go have a look and see if we can't get ourselves into some arguments over here. Some altercations, some general... We're going to call somebody a whore's nickel. I'll be honest about it. We're going to call somebody a whore nickel. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to you, sir, are a whore nickel. And they'll be like, oh my god, did he just call you a whore nickel? You better do something about that. And they'll be like, yeah, what? And then I'm going to push him, and that's how it's going to go down. Let's go rob this caravan. It's funny how they never resist. They just allow you to take their stuff. They're like, okay, you can have our gold. Please, sir. We're nothing but a poor caravan. <laughs> There's another 600 dinars. I'm going to rob all three of these. Because there's no downside to it. I'd rather do that than get myself into trouble actually knocking these over and making myself hated with the other king. Oh, there's somebody right there. Tensugai. Yep, he is going to be our next victim. And so there he is. We've run him down in the middle of our own territory. The only problem that we're going to run into is that I believe he's a Kurgit Lord. And so with Kurgit Lords, we're fighting in the desert, which is largely flat. That's going to give their horsemen a pretty decent advantage. Luckily, we have horsemen of our own, so we should be able to keep this thing from getting too ridiculously hairy. We're going to keep it like a middle hairy level. Like sort of like one of those semi-hairy dogs that isn't really kind of hairy. They've got little patches. They're sort of spotty with the fur. And yeah, they're coming straight at us. So let's go ahead and we're going to send the cavalry out to meet them in the middle. And we're going to have everybody else box up because that's really their best chance for victory. And we should start seeing some casualties here very, very shortly. Oh god, we picked up, yeah, we actually made a couple friends there. And you've always got to watch your back whenever this stuff happens. So now that we've gathered them in the middle, I'm going to give the infantry charge order. And they should be able to run up on this mob in just a moment. The other issue we're going to have to deal with, as always, is with the Kurgeats, they're going to be firing bows everywhere. There's going to be all kinds of range damage flying about. It's going to be nasty. Oh, got him on accident. I say on accident because that was more of a reflex than an actual skilled attack. That was one of those times where you're like, I think I should swing, like, right now. But your brain says to do it. Like, I'm sorry, your your hand actually says to do it. It's kind of one of those automatic reaction type deals. Looks like we're doing okay pretty... Yeah, it looks like we're doing alright here in the middle. Got Count Tunsu Guy off of his horse, which is good. Whack some of these other little dudes that are running around. And really the cleanup work is what always takes the longest with the Kurgeats. The Kurgeats have that nasty habit of being a kiting army, which means it's probably going to take you twice as long to finish a battle with them if they play it well. Who's remaining? Oh, there's one guy still running around. Hopefully an archer or somebody will get him. And there it is, our first victory of the day. Are you proud? I'm proud. I'm feeling it. Let's jump over this horse to celebrate. All right. We lost one Mameluke and one horseman. That's terrible, but still, 48 for two. I tend to complain about things. Really? All right, so apparently it left one guy remaining. I'm not really sure why it did such a thing, but I guess it's going to make me ride on over here and stab him in the face just to make sure. I think my horse is lamed. He's feeling a little slow right now. We have to trade him in at the glue factory for something a little bit more vigorous. Because you know how I like my vigor. I don't want anything unless it's vigorous. Unless it's like a vigorous robbing or like a vigorous poke in the eye. In that case, I suppose I take it back. Okay, so Tansu guy escaped. And he doesn't really have anybody I want to capture either. Yeah, none of these are none of these items are looking amazing. I mean, I'll loot them just because we're going to have to offset our food costs at some point, but for now, unfortunately, fighting with a lot of these Kurgit lords, you don't seem to get a lot out of it. Over here, we've got 39. Yeah, let's go fight with Doru. We need to get him handled. Well, unless Marmoon's going to jump in on it. If he's going to jump in on it and ruin the whole battle, I wanted to go 1v1, man. You know how it goes. That's I don't want people jumping in on a fight. That's my duty. 
What do the Lancers look like? They look okay. They're kind of expensive. Let me look at his stats really quickly because I've never used one before. Level 23, eh, they're not so good. They are not so good. If we compare them to, say, the Mamluk, let's go back. Yeah, level 27, a little bit better. They've got higher charisma, which is sort of strange, but better agility, too. Let's figure out some of our orga organizational stuff here because, frankly, oh, my warhorse is not crippled. I guess he was just kind of moving uphill on sand, and I was being too hard on him. They want to give us 1,200 dinars for Jarl Boba. I suppose we'll take it. Just because you never know when the war is going to end. And I really punctuated that sentence. That was one of those times where your brain is just like, you know what, I'm going to stop this thought. I'm just, I'm not going to continue any further. Let's see if Weya has depleted its troops as of yet. It's still got 54 sharpshooters, and we're only up by a couple of men, so I still feel like that's a bad idea. Let's go rob another caravan. Because we can. There it is. 662 more. We are paying off debts here. I think in the last episode we were around like 8,000 or so. I don't know. I haven't been keeping track of my cash really. Sometimes you don't really have to, to be honest. At a certain point, it just becomes self-sustaining. You're always in the black. You never have any real problems. they have got wool cloth over here. I was hoping that I could get at some of these little villages and find a location with some food. I could raid, but for now, I prefer to hold off on it because my guess is that we're probably going to do some kind of counterattack in the future. There's a basket of fruit. I'll take that. Sell you some arrows on the way. You can't afford my arrows, you broke villagers. You brokety broke villagers. And I guess we could take a hostile action and rob this place. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let me upgrade all my units before I go any further. We got Kurgid horsemen in there. I may just convert them into horse archers. It seems like it's the better and more astute decision, but... Just given the thought, their lancers just don't seem to be that good, so... Let's raid Shaylees, or Shalez, or however you want to say it. See Haley's. There's a number of ways we could pronounce that, just based, but I'm going to go with phonics because hooked on phonics has worked for me once before. The ninth grade was a rough year. Let's see here. Some extra bread. I may dump off some of this stuff. Those gloves are kind of good. I may go back for them. Don't worry, I may go back for them. Let's get rid of some of this ugly stuff, though, and we'll take the velvet and everything else so that we can pay for our next crop of food. Actually, they dropped a lot of food. We may not have to. Let's ditch the chickens, and we'll take the breads, we'll take the cabbages. Drop the arrows so that we can pick up the grain, the fish. There we go. So that's looking a lot better. Now that we've got ourselves packed up with some goods, that was, uh, that was one of my big concerns right there. I was really, really worried about running out of food, and it seems like it's left us in a spot now where I don't have to make any weird resource runs back to town. It looks like King Gravith was coming out to fight us. That almost went really, really badly. We got that raiding party off just in time because King Gravith would have penetrated us very, very aggressively. It would have been unfortunate. I think he's got something like 100 sharpshooters or something terrifying just running around, being a nuisance. Oh, God, they've got a lot of lords left. Let's maybe think about leaving 10 of their lords laying in the dirt. There's 44 there. There's 100 there. He's got 28 sergeants, which is a lot. However, they are lacking with regards to ranged retinues. So let's maybe jump in on a fight with him and we'll see how this goes. This one could be a little weird. Just a little strange, but I think it'll turn out okay. Let me see if I can get people at an advantageous position here. I really do like this hill. And so I think this is going to be the hill that I leave my troops on. And then we'll just wheel around in circles like we always do. We'll kind of just wheel around to face them whenever they decide to come at us. For whatever reason, it's not showing off my unit orders right now in the bottom left corner. But rest assured, I am giving them. Let's take all of our other units and we're going to kind of gather ourselves at the bottom of the hill here. We lucked out. I think we lucked out that that other group, that 44 that was off on the right, didn't join this fight. Because I think that would have been just what they needed to tip the balance on us. I'm going to leave my cavalry right here, and then I'm going to go back. I could have done that. I realized I could have used the flag to command that, but still. I think I'd rather just make sure that this is all orchestrated properly over here. I want to make sure that we have an administrator on hand so that things don't get too weird. 
I do feel like our infantry is a little bit light on this. Since they're wheeling, I'm going to bring this over to here. Need my cavalry. And I'm going to have them run off over that way. Kind of lead the enemy around. I don't want them to get into the fight early. That's my big, big concern right now. Is that if you leave your cavalry isolated, they tend to just get chewed into little pieces. They get chewed like a delicious sirloin. I think I'm going to sound the charge right now. I don't think I want to leave them with the opportunity to skirmish with me. They do have a lot of sergeants, but luckily sergeants are very, very inferior to Huskarls, so we should be alright in the melee battle. Oh, I'm not getting any notifications at all. So I guess we'll just be flying blind for the remainder of this episode. I appear to have turned them off somehow. Let's go ahead and slaughter. Our archer should be able to snipe a little bit from the hill. I'm not seeing what looks like... Well, I mean, I think we are taking casualties right now. But without the notifications, it's really difficult to quantify. I am seeing a lot of units still standing, though, so I think we're alright. They sound like they're cheering, but I know with 100 units, he's probably going to get reinforcements before this whole thing is over. Maybe knock this lord off the... Did I get him? Yeah, I got him. Save our friend there who's fighting with this caravan master. He's getting flexed on. Oh, and then we got sharpshooters coming in. Okay. Loverly. Let me make a pass at maybe diverting some of these sergeants from the remainder of my troops because these sergeants are a big problem if they run right into my ranged units, which I think is what their plan was. I mean, the spawning place was really, really unfortunate. We had a little bit of bad luck right there with regards to where they replenished themselves. Are my archers out of arrows? Ooh, that's bad too. Well, we may lose some guys here just because cavalry got towards this fight quicker than everybody else did. Oh, there they go. Everything just turned back on for some reason. Well, I'd prefer it would have turned on a little bit earlier so I could have figured out whether I was winning or losing a bit easier, but whatever. See if I can kill him off. And then we've got a couple more heading straight. Oh, good. We've got reinforcements coming, too. I was a little worried that this was the last remainder of my remnant. This was like that overhanging one when you were in second grade. I used to hate... I had a big problem with long division when I was in, like, second grade because I don't think teachers explain it very well. Long division definitely jammed me up for a little bit. And I always hated it when you had a remainder because you were never sure if there was supposed to be a remainder or not. Like, sometimes the question would be like solve to the remainder and then other times they would just leave it standing so you're like oh man I don't know if there's supposed to be a remainder or not and there'd always be like that pesky one just hanging out there be like damn you one I wish you would stay the loneliest number instead of throwing yourself into the middle of my rudimentary equation you bastard I feel like we probably took some losses on this one so we may have to do a little bit of recovery work after this episode but it should be all right what would be wins without loss my horsey what? Who would do such a thing? Who would strike such a glorious equestrian animal? Weak. Super, super weak. Horsey! Speak to me, Horsey! I need Horsey Aspirin. Stat! And maybe some of those shocky pads, but like a bigger version for horses. He looks so sad on the ground right now. How did we do? We have 8 killed and 30 wounded. That is not nearly so bad as I figured it would be. That's... It's losses, but it's not as bad a losses as I had thought, so I think we'll be alright. Let's go ahead, and he escaped, unfortunately. We did get a lot of captures, which will be good, though, so we'll take our time, we'll go back to town, we'll throw some of these guys off into the slave wagon, and once we've done that, we should have made a little bit of cash. Ooh, we got some nice helmets and stuff, too, so it might be worthwhile to throw some of these on the heads of some of our troops. Also a military cleaver, that's an expensive weapon right there. I may... Yeah, I'm going to use the military cleaver. I'm going to throw that thing up in my inventory. And I think it's got a little bit better of a reach. Oh, it doesn't. My saber has a better reach. Well, never mind then. I don't want it. The cleaver's like, oh, he was all excited. He thought he was going to be part of the team. Alas, he was not. Let's upgrade the remainder. So we lost some Huskarls. We didn't lose very many Mamluks, which is surprising since they were the first ones to get into the battle. Let's put in a couple horse archers. We'll use them to the best ability that we can. They'll kind of ride around the edges. We'll send the remainder. Basically what the AI is going to do with these guys is when you send everybody else into charge, they're going to sort of fan out a little bit and ride in circles around the enemy, do a little bit of a kiting business. 
but I do think now would be the time to sort of quit ourselves of this combat. We could take that 44 out right there without too many issues. Oh, we're at 54 units, so we're kind of on the edge of our usefulness as a fighting force at the moment. So maybe I will swing up to Dirham. I don't really like the supplies that we have down in the Serenid Sultan, and unfortunately we don't seem to have the trade goods that I thought we would have. It looks like there's some kind of party going on. I'm not going to head down that way just yet. Let's go to the marketplace, and first and foremost, we'll unload some of these goods. So let's get rid of all of that. We've got a little bit of velvet there. I think the two groups of tools and maybe some leather work. Oh, maybe not. I was hoping. I was hoping for hoping's sake. Drop the 900 off there with the armor. They have 10,000 dinars. Oh, I should have just sold everything to this spot. Could have gotten away with it. Could have gotten away with it, which reminds me of my favorite episode. If you guys ever watched the Fox Batman, back when I was a kid, the Batman that was produced by Fox was like the greatest version of Batman. Like It was the greatest version of Batman cartoons you could ever wish for. And they had an episode that was called, and that's how I almost got him. And that's what that reminded me of. Kind of a random tangent, but I can't resist talking about Batman randomly. Because Batman is the stuff, you guys. Batman is by far the superior superhero. It's kind of a, I don't know. Batman seems like he's gained a lot of popularity lately, and my inner hipster wants to run away from that, but I'm going to stay loyal. I'm going to stick with Batman. I mean, I've still got Mega Man as one of my fandoms, too, so I think it'll be all right. We've got our Ransom Broker. We got it on our first city, which I am very, very thankful for. There's nothing worse than running around with 25-plus prisoners in the middle of a combat zone, hoping that you'll find a Ransom Vendor and not being able to track one down. We've managed to land ourselves about at 20,000 dinars, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. Not bad at all. Upgrade those units here from the interface. I probably scared him. He's probably sitting there. We're sitting at the ransom broker and you're mousing over your own men. He's like, no, traitor. <laughs> let's take this farmer and we're going to help him out. He's in Shibden. So let's go to Shibden or to Shibden. I don't know if the T really matters or if it's like a silent T. There it is. Shibden. Let's go down to Shibden. I, I'm going to be honest. I'm saying it so much just because I really like the word Shibden. I'm just going to say Shibden, 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 Shibden over ooh, let's do another lensa maybe put him up at the top so they get deployed into battle a little bit earlier borsh has got himself a level and not the type you would use for carpentry the type we could apply to make him more useful in battle i think we were working on intellect with him he was kind of our pathfinding guy and our spotting guy and our tracking guy it appears so let's give him some more spotting yeah, being able to see a little bit further never hurts. Or he'll just supplement Behester's. It looks like Behester was actually our spotter, so that was probably a problem. Doesn't really matter. He should supplement that, though. You should see, like, a little plus one next to that, but I'm not seeing it. I don't remember getting engineer points. That's weird. In any case, let's go rescue. I want to do this during daytime. Fighting at night is scary, you guys. There's monsters and also bandits. What's worse than a group of bandits? A group of bandits with monsters. It could be a lot worse. That's always my motto in life. You never get, like, down about stuff because it could always be worse. In the universe, I always feel like the universe is waiting for you to be like, how could this get any worse? I feel like it's always sitting there waiting on you. See how many of these I can get in one pass. I want to be like Derek's boot and nuke up in here. Just one pass annihilation. That was an IT joke. So for all you IT folks out there... D-Ban. I want to be like the D-Ban of this battlefield. I don't want anything remaining. Or the Black Forest. I think that's what the other program was called that I used all the time. I loved wiping hard drives. I used to have quotes and everything. I used to pretend that I was like harnessing a nuclear bomb. Wiping out drives. There's a strange type of power that goes into wiping out billions of bits and bytes and bagooters. Most people don't know what a bagooter is. It's a little known thing in IT. It's a subdivision of something else. I, I'm going to let you guys Google it. Lost a Lancer. How are we going to lose? <laughs> Losing, like, things that I like. We're going to leave that there. And that's going to make them happy. And we are going to recruit some Svads so that we can turn them into Knights. While we're up here, we may as well. That place is not happy with me at all. Oh, there's somebody up here trying to run a train on these poor little villagers. Well, I'm going to run him off because I'm a good guy like that. Because I care about the people. I am a knight of the people. These are the things that happen when you mess with Mad Dog McGrittle. 
with 33 enemies. I don't really know if it's going to be worth it to send... I didn't look and see what his battle lines were. I mean, obviously, if he's got, like, 33 knights or 33 huskarls, I would probably organize myself a little bit differently, but I think I'm just going to sound the charge. I'm not seeing a whole lot of reasons to set myself up in a battle formation. There it is. So we've got Fry Chin out already. Ooh, I almost ate that spear. These guys have really, really long spears. That's worrisome. As a horseman, I disagree with that strategy. It makes me sad. Why can't I just slice you and dice you? He, I thought he was trying to go over the back of his head right there to stab me. I was like, wow, he is getting... It's like that guy at the pool table that pulls out a trick shot out of nowhere. He's like, I got this. Stabs me over the back of his head. God. Like this is a kung fu movie or something. That's what I need to do. I need to find myself like a really good feudal Japan mod for this game. I did start playing a Clash of Kings, but once again, because the game is running so many processes and calculating so many things, I had some troubles with it. We'll leave the battle there. And we had two killed. What did we lose? A horseman and a Mamluk. Those cavalry just don't seem to be very good at keeping themselves alive. Carpenter blaming his tools at its finest right there. Okay, so Mathel has hit level 15. There's some bandits running around. Let's go to Raya Blet. I think I should also get some more infantry. No, Peshmi! So somebody raided our town, and it's gone from average to very poor. Protecting your pi- <laughs> I'm sorry, protecting your fiefs is going to be pretty much impossible. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. But in many cases, you just can't stay at home long enough to make sure that it doesn't get raided every two to three seconds by ridiculous people. So that means we're probably going to have to quest a lot more to make that place happy. But we're sort of out of range anyways right now. I need to get myself nice and fixed up with some more Huskarls. How are we looking on our unit cap? 92? What is my report looking at? 92. Okay, so we're already capped out. Huskarls, we've only got 11. So I really do feel like our infantry has been deficient in this episode. We really need more, 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 more. Let's make ourselves some more knights. We've got some more lancers. Right now we've got a really good cavalry force. One that I'm really proud of and really think is going to be useful to us, but at the same time, you've got to pay attention to all things at once. I believe I'm going to level up Metheld. Let me see your equipment here. She's got a 43 helmet. Let's give her that one since she's one of our main battlefield homies. I could give her a horse because she is mounted up at this point. And beyond that, there's not a whole lot there. Let's do her skills. Give her a little more charisma so that we can up her leadership a tad. And then we'll continue on with the one-handed weapons. And I believe that's where I'm going to break off this episode. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another fun-filled episode of Mountain Blade Warband. I hope you guys have been having a lot of fun. I have. I love this game. This is one of those games that I can just play endlessly. I take small breaks, but every three to four months or so I boot this up and I play about 100 hours. It's one of those weird games that just really has its hooks in me. I'll see you guys next time. Take care out there, everybody, and hi do.